everybody hear me okay? I'm trying a little under the weather, so I don't want to get too close to anybody. But, um, you know, thank you for coming tonight. Thank you for Kevin for setting this up. Uh, you know, as you mentioned, this is our only countywide race, and uh, we just want to get to know who the candidates are and, uh, you know, what they stand for, what their differences are, what their similarities. And we're just kind of looking for how do we keep Silver County safe and uh, what's the goal? So the format tonight is we're going to some questions submitted by the audience. There's no pre-scripted questions. That's why we're asking for you to write down the questions. Um, uh, your name will not be mentioned during the question, um, uh, but candidates will be able to review the question to see if they both agree on it before it's asked. So the candidates will know ahead of time what questions you're going to be asked. So please add the, add the questions. We can do that as we move go on and everything. So any questions from you? But Are you going to give them an opportunity to make opening statements as to what? Yes, we're going to, work, we're going to have two minutes for opening statements, and then we're going to ask the questions. We only have five questions, so this could be really quick, guys. So I encourage you to ask the questions. You know, and. Uh, so that, so that we can make the most of this forum. Uh, we have the building uh, till nine o'clock, so it'd be great just to, you know, make these guys sweat. They make us sweat all the time. Let's make them sweat for a little bit, right? <laughs> so, so everybody who can stand will say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the, the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everybody. So we did a recording clip tonight, and uh, Karen Johnson is going to be going first with an introduction, and then followed by Pat. Pat Nienopper. Nienopper. Okay. There you yeah. go. I can never say his name. You know, it's so long. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a past, so. And the format tonight is we're going to have two minutes for every question. At 30 minutes, I, they're going to get to see me flashing this. We also have a screen up seconds. here that shows the time. Then 15 seconds. seconds. Then the 15 seconds, 5 seconds, and then stop. So if you're in mid-sentence at, at, at stop, we'll let you finish the sentence. Okay. All right. So Karen, if you would, please. Start now. Oh, okay. Uh, good evening, everyone, and thank you for being here. This is a much bigger crowd than I, I thought it would be. Um, I'm happy to be here. My name is Karen Johnson, and I am a resident of Sibley County. I am a chief of police in Winthrop, and I'm very excited to be part of the law enforcement family here in Sibley County. A um, little bit about me. I've been a, a licensed police officer for 15 years. I moved to Sibley County, uh, grateful for my first job opportunity in 2003. Uh, little bit of backup, if I may. Uh, my degree is in public relations and advertising uh, from Winona State University, a BA in public relations. I decided that I wanted to do something more with the community, so I went back to Metropolitan State University to obtain my license uh, certificate in law enforcement, and I became post-certified. And then I took the job in 2003, gratefully. Uh, not expecting to stay, to be honest. I thought I would go back to eventually where my family is from, and I met a farm boy, and I never left. My husband, Mark, is here tonight, and uh, he works in ag. We live in Bismarck Township, between Winthrop and Gibbon, and I, uh, I'm very proud to be uh, the chief of police. In, in, between to, in between taking the job and being chief of police in Winthrop, I worked five years in Shakopee, and it was a fabulous experience, still living in Winthrop, and then I got the opportunity to be chief of police in 2011. I have done that. Uh, I've been chief of police since. I also uh, lead up the school resource officer position at GFW Schools, which I'm, I'm very proud to do as the first school resource officer in the county. It's a great program, and I'm very proud of it, and our officer uh, who serves. I served 10 years on the Winthrop Ambulance. I currently work as a part-time death investigator for Midwest Medical Examiner's Office, uh, which is a fantastic experience as well. And I, um, my husband and I raised three uh, we're, we're happy to raise our three children in Winthrop, and that, that keeps us busy. So my time is up, and uh, thank you. <laughs> it's all right. We'll give them some time afterwards. Thank you. Okay. Patrick? 
Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Uh, my name is Pat Nienaber. For those of you who don't know me, um, I currently work at the Sibley County Sheriff's Office. And to give you a little bit of background about me, I'm originally from Sox Center, Minnesota. Um, I moved to Arlington in 1990, and I lived there with my wife, Gwen. We raised two children in Arlington, Kirsten and Courtney, who are now both moved off and married. Um, we are proud grandparents of two little ones. Um, I've been in law enforcement for 30 years, and in that time I've been worked for just uh, a handful of organizations, um, including the Glenwood Police Department and the Freeport Police Department. In 1990, I was hired by the Arlington Police Department. I worked there for three and a half years until I was hired by the Sibley County Sheriff's Office in 1994. I started there as a deputy. I also did some dispatching and jailing when I first started. Um, I was promoted in 2001 to the position of investigator and I was the first investigator for Sibley County to work with the Drug Task Force. In 2002, I was promoted to Chief Deputy, a uh, position which I currently hold. I should back up just a little bit. I also served as the Interim Police Chief in Arlington in 2017, and in 2012, I served as the Chief of Police for the City of Henderson for approximately one year. Um, as my experience as Chief Deputy, I have had 16 years of extensive experience in working with a budget of $3.8 million. I have had 16 years of extensive experience managing 30 employees. Uh, I've been able to help hire many good people in that time and unfortunately have to terminate several people in that time. I believe that my experience and my qualifications make me the best choice to be the Sibley County Sheriff. If you, you overrun, you'll hear that too. So, well, well, thank you both for that introduction. Uh, tonight, uh, Commissioner County Commissioner Bobby Harder will be asking the questions. So, Bobby, if you want to ask the first question. Okay. What are the primary functions of the Sibley County Sheriff, and how will you uphold these functions as the elected leader? And we'll start with Karen. Oh, okay. First, the primary function of Sibley County Sheriff. Um, all right. I uh, well, it's interesting because I've heard it recently said that the uh, the Sibley County Sheriff is an administrative function, and I I disagree with that respectfully. Um, there is a lot of uh, the, the Sibley County the Sheriff is in charge of the Sheriff's Office and works extensively with the community with the police chiefs in the municipalities, uh, runs the, of course, the budget, works with the commissioners. It's important to be f fiscally responsible. Um, many employees, um, it is to manage. So that's, it's a complex job, and there's a lot of layers to that onion. However, I do feel that uh, one part of the, an essential part of the sheriff's job that has been overlooked in this county thus far is being uh, the face of the department in front. Um, I'm an all hands on deck type of person, so I would like to see the sheriff more in front with the people. Uh, that means in the cars, taking calls, uh, if there's, if they're, you know, doing paper service, doing arrests, that sort of thing as needed. I feel that the sheriff is, a, it, it's a multifunction, it's, it's a multifaceted job. And I feel very passionate that the sheriff should be responsible to the people, um, not only just the budget. I would not be the type of sheriff that would be behind the desk all the time. I feel um, that that is ineffective leadership. So I would like to be in front and uh, leading from the front. That means nights, weekends, holidays is needed. That means not being afraid to get my hands dirty. That means leading by example. Thank you, Karen. Do you want the question asked again? Yeah, please. Okay. The question was, what are the primary functions of the Sibley County Sheriff, and how will you uphold these functions as the elected leader? Uh, it's my opinion that the primary functions of the Sibley County Sheriff, as I said in my opening statement, with a budget of $3.8 million and 30 employees, the primary function is an administrative position. It is the sheriff's responsibility to to work with the county board, um, 
it is the sheriff's responsibility to get everything needed so that his department, her department, can can do can have what they need to do their job effectively. Um, it is also a primary function of the sheriff to uphold the Minnesota and the United States Constitution, along with all the laws of Minnesota. Do you, so you felt that was enough time? To sort, I just want to check with the candidates because we have pre-agreed to two minutes. Do you feel that's still adequate? Okay. Yes. Let's give the Henderson okay. Independent a chance to add some questions. No, she does not fill out a uh, sheet here. Okay, well, she uh, doesn't question need to fill out a sheet. She's a member of the press. This is we, questions from the public is what we had to buy. Okay. How about she asks her questions? and then I can have a chance? Yeah, we'd like to have you start off and... Okay. I may have some questions that are written down. Well, that's okay. So. I trust Bobby to write those off to the side then. So, so let's, let's, let's go on to the next question. Okay. And this one will be for Pat. With more cities seeming to rely on the county sheriff to police their cities, how do you envision this office's ability to meet the demand? Who's that question from? They don't have a name on that. They weren't going to say. No, we're not saying the yeah, name. We're, 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 we're not going to keep that on From my own information, though. Are we ready? Yeah. Okay. Could you repeat the question? <laughs> yes. With more cities seeming to rely on the county sheriff to police their cities, how do you envision this office's ability to meet this demand? The sheriff's office currently has uh, contracts with the cities of New Auburn and Green Isle for their police services. And we also take call time for the cities of Gibbon, Winthrop, Arlington, and Gaylord on occasion. Um, in all honesty, the more time that we have to take calls for the cities can be a burden on the sheriff's office. And it can stretch our deputies awfully thin. So it's something that we're going to have to work with city leaders to see how they want to go moving forward with their departments, if they want to take their own call time, or if they want to have the sheriff's office do it. At some point, if the sheriff's office continually takes more and more call time from the cities, it could be something that uh, the sheriff is going to have to approach the county board as far as increasing staff. Um, currently, on weekend mornings, I believe the sheriff's office is not only on call for the county, but for all of the cities in the county except for one. And that can be difficult. Want me to repeat the question again? So you want me to repeat it? Yeah, just please. Okay. Yeah, With, just, just, just repeat the question yeah. after. With more cities seeming to rely on the county sheriff to police their cities, how do you envision this office's ability to meet this demand? Well, I agree with what a lot of what Pat said. It is, I, I believe, you know, the sheriff's office currently helps out um, a lot with a lot of call call time for each for each city. Some contract and uh, some partial, but um, it's calls are going up across the board, and uh, and staffing has by and large stayed the same. In Winthrop, we have increased one officer, and I'm very I'm very proud of that and uh, happy about that uh, to better handle customer service. However, at some point, there is going to there's going to have to be a conversation between the sheriff, the elected sheriff, and the county commissioners about changing the schedule and the budget. Um, right now, I one of the first things I would do is is to address the schedule. Um, right now, there's no deputies on during the daytime. Uh, there's call time, but if you know if there is, I feel it's it's short set, it's short staffed and not managed well, and I do worry for officer safety as well. So not only is, is it burdened with taking the county county calls, but city calls as well, and sometimes without without backup. Um, so that that concerns me. That would concern me as a as as it concerns me as a police chief, uh, officer safety, and it would concern me as a sheriff. So um, that would be something that the, whoever the elected sheriff would be, and you know if it was me, I would have an immediate conversation with the county commissioners 
about how best to handle these, because calls aren't gonna decrease, I can guarantee you. They're only gonna continue to increase as well as officer safety issues. We have to make sure the public is, is uh, obviously do our due diligence with public safety, and we all, we all wanna go home at the end of the day. So um, I, it's, it's a very strong um, opinion of mine that we need to address that sooner than later. Thank you to both. Uh, next question will be to Karen. Okay, the question is, what is your policy on how to best address the drug situation in Sibley County? We have had several arrests for use, growing, and distribution. Uh, okay. Um, the drug situation. Okay, so here we go. I feel uh, it's, it's, it is one of my platforms, and it is one of the reasons I ran, that Sibley County needs to be on a drug task force. I'm a collaborative person. I'm a collaborative relationship person. And I feel Sibley County has been, has in the last 15 years that I've worked here, partly as chief and partly as an officer, uh, has, has uh, lacked in collaborative relationships with outside agencies. I feel that a task force it would be one of the first things I would do. We have a drug problem in Sibley County. Every county has a drug problem. And we need to address that and be aggressive with that and not minimize it. Um, and and uh, basically, I would, I've talked to every county surrounding us, and everyone is in a drug task force except us. We didn't have a drug task force for a long time. We had an officer who was not necessarily you know, doing due diligence to the job. That situation has been resolved. Now we have another officer who is, who is uh, very skilled and is in our own drug task force, but that's one officer. I do not feel that a dra drug task force of one is sufficient for any county, especially Sibley County. Um, plus, one, it doesn't even meet the definition of a drug task force. We are not even el eligible for any grants being an only county drug task force. So what would I do? I would reach out to area sheriffs. And I already have, uh, we have uh, South, Southwest Task Force, we have uh, BLR and uh, River Valley that I have talked to sheriffs about. And it would be my opinion that Sibley County would be best served by being on a drug task force. Collaborative relationships, watching their back as, as well as our own. And these, these drug dealers, the mid and upper, upper, upper level ones, they move, right? Why would we not work with our neighbors? It only makes sense. Um, and also, uh, it's fiscally responsible. We're gonna get more bang for our buck. And uh, I feel like our residents are gonna be safer. What is your policy on how to best address the drug situation in Sibley County? We have had several arrests for use, growing, and distribution. Okay, Sibley County. Yeah. Sibley County currently has uh, one investigator. We have three investigators. One of our investigators is assigned primarily to for drug enforcement. Um, he routinely let me let me uh, talk about the drug bus first we had a, a marijuana grow operation in the northwest part of our county uh, that had about 250 plants growing it was an indoor and an outdoor grow um, during the course of that investigation our investigator worked with task force from two different drug task forces along with the Minnesota BCA in order to obtain the search warrants to for us to go in and bust the place when we went in, we had agents from nine, we had, excuse me, nine agents from various task forces or the Minnesota BCA who came with us voluntarily to help. I don't feel that joining one of these task forces is necessary to work with them as we showed up in Grafton Township. Um, I, have, I have also talked to neighboring sheriffs about a drug task force and there is grant funding currently available Sibley County has been in a drug task force twice in the past. Um, most recently, we were in with LeSueur County and we lost our, or our grant funding. Before that, and some years ago, we were in a task force um, with counties to the west and to the north of us. Basically, Sibley County is, a, is, no matter which task force we would join, we were on the edge and we are the smallest county. And my fear of what would happen is our investigator who we would then have to donate to the drug task force and basically I would not be his supervisor anymore is going to spend 
an inordinate amount of time in the bigger counties and in the bigger cities than, than what Sibley County would get. At this time, I don't feel it's, a, it's, it's the best thing for the county, but in the future, I would keep an open mind. So the next okay. question will be Bobby, to Pat. Could you speak up when you read the question? We can't hear the question oh. back here. I don't have to have this. So I'll turn this one. How about that? What do you think the most important skill of being a good sheriff? Is that me or you? I think it's me, is it? Pat me. I think the most important skill if, if there's only one, it's being able to be a leader. And it's being a leader is being able to run the whole department, um, but not run every aspect of it. The sheriff's office is far too big for one person, for the sheriff, to know every detail of what happens in, in every aspect of the sheriff's office. Um, the sheriff's office has many functions. Not only do we answer calls, do our deputies answer calls, and our investigators investigate them, but we have a, a jail, a 20-bed jail. We have a civil process division. Um, so it is important that the sheriff be able to delegate and delegate to responsible people and let them do get good people and let them do a good job. Um, like I said, uh, the office is far too big for one person to run every aspect of it. What do you think the most important skill of being a good sheriff? Um, the most important skill, I believe, is putting the people first. The sheriff is, and this is going to go back a bit to my, my previous question, um, so hopefully I don't repeat myself. Um, and I certainly agree with everything Pat said. I feel that was a, a very solid answer. But um, I guess I'm going to go with making sure that the, the public interest is taken care of. The sheriff needs to be front and center, out in front, accountable to the public, and also, yes, a leader within the organization as well. And that takes a lot of delegation, trust with your people. We are very fortunate in Sibley County. We have a lot of talent in this county. Um, am I running because there are, are things that can be addressed? Of course. There's things that can be addressed in every county, but I'm very proud to be part of such a strong law enforcement team, not only at the county, uh, our investigators, our municipal police, our troopers, and to it's important that the sheriff not only delegates, trusts their people, but also fosters ideas from within the department and bring those up. I can't tell you how many wonderful ideas I've heard from the deputies, investigators, that I think would work well for Sibley County. Be fiscally responsible, uh, just take the office in a whole new direction, a whole new line of thinking with technology, with budget. Uh, but like I said before, the sheriff, there, there needs to be a delicate balance between that administrator position, which I don't feel it is, um, important administrative functions, yes, absolutely. And there's a lot of moving parts to that. But the sheriff needs to be out in front at those pancake breakfasts, taking, you know, if someone stops the sheriff at 10 o'clock at the, at the grocery store, that's the person you need to listen to because the, the sheriff is accountable to each and every taxpayer. Um, not only with the budget, but with public safety and uh, with the staff because we need to keep our community safe and uh, our officers need to go home at the end of the night. Thank you. Next question will go to Karen. Okay. Is our jail, excuse me, is our county jail sufficient for the next 10 to 20 years? <coughs> if not, what is your plan for the future of the jail? <coughs> Very good question. And I don't, um, I did look at the budget in the last four years, but uh, Pat's probably going to be able to flesh this out with numbers a lot more better than I can. Um, I feel our jail does a good job. Uh, you know, are there issues? Uh, of course, and um, any any sheriff, any manager is going to deal with those issues as, as they come along. Um, I feel that uh, you know the, the courthouse is unique because it's landlocked and there's uh, it's also a historical building. So any sheriff is going to be very 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 careful, uh, you know, with that whole animal expanding in any way. And I know the sheriff's office has been has been uh, very cramped in tax for space, and the jail is no exception. However, uh, you know. Like I said, Pat may be able to flesh this out a little, little more than I, but uh, I, I only knew of the sheriff um, closing the jail once. Unfortunately, the, 
there was no communication there and none of the PDs knew about it. Um, but it may have happened more than once, once in my memory. Uh, and certainly that can be fiscally responsible to do that, to farm our, to, if, you know, we're under, if we're understaffed to, to farm those prisoners out. Um, needs to be better communication there. Uh, but I feel that with proper planning and again, being careful with the budget, uh, fiscally responsible, I feel that we can continue to serve the citizens of Sibley County with the jail we currently have without overspending. Thank you, Karen. Um, uh, Pat, same question. Okay, here's the question. Is our county jail sufficient for the next 10 to 20 years? If not, what is your plan for the future of the jail? I can't say exactly how long our jail is going to be sufficient for. It is uh, 23 years old now. Several years ago, the Department of Corrections started to tell us that we needed to look at options. Um, we were having troubles finding parts for if a part in a door would break, we're struggling to find parts to keep the jail functional. Now with that being said, and this is a very difficult question, um, there's no easy answers for this. Lesseur County is in the middle of putting, or they are building, I believe, about a $40 million facility. That's a lot of money, and that's a lot of money to ask the taxpayers to pay. Um, another issue that complicates this is our jail population. Our, our daily jail population has fluctuated anywhere from 17 to 5, probably within the past 3 to 5 months. Um, if we're going to have 5 inmates on a daily basis, it's hard to ask the taxpayers to build a new jail. Um, at the same point, if we are going to be near capacity, it is not fiscally responsible to house prisoners out in another county. Um, as far as remodeling the jail, uh, we have issues with the historical society. I recall even 23 years ago when this current facility was remodeled, we were not allowed to go up um, because uh, it would block the view of the courthouse. So remodeling our current facility, and I'm not an architect, but I think that's going to be a very tricky thing. I think at some point if a decision is either going to have to be made to partner with other counties or county, or at some point uh, the Department of Corrections is going to come in and force us to do something. Okay, thank you. One second. So that was a good time to get your questions in. I'm going to keep asking. You know? <laughs> we have to at least get one extra question. Oh, there it is. Yes, that okay. fabulous. Thank so, you. Do, do, do questions. We can do it. <laughs> Thank you very much. I don't care if you have issues with any of them. what would you change if elected what would I change there are several things um, that I would look to um, one thing I would like to see is I would like to see our office our deputies and our investigators get more involved with our local schools I recently had the opportunity to have lunch down in Henderson with the elementary and it was really a it was a really an enjoyable experience and not just for me but I think it was enjoyable for the kids um, I got a chance to go from table to table, introduce myself, listen to what fourth and fifth graders have going on in their daily lives. And so I think that's, that's one thing I would like to see all of us. Um, I think building positive relationships with school kids can have nothing but benefits for us. Another thing, another area of change that I see is something that we have started already and it's kind of a, a crime scam prevention program that we're starting. Um, the Sheriff's Office is putting together a program to educate our, our people, um, particularly our seniors, are being scammed out of money on a daily basis. Scams is one of the 
not one of the scam and fraud is the highest um, growing crime that we have in Sibley County without a doubt. So the program that we have put together is designed, designed to educate people, like I said, specifically our seniors, on how to avoid becoming the victim of a scam. Once a person gets scammed out of money, it is extremely difficult to get the money back. Um, if you don't get it in the first 24 hours, your chances are very small. So teaching people, educating them on how to avoid it, uh, I think is an important thing. Okay. If elected, what would you change? Okay. All right. If elected, um, I would change. I, I have three platforms I'll expound on a little bit. Uh, drug task force, and I already talked a little bit about that. I would uh, talk immediately about joining a drug task force, not only with our, our current task force agent, but uh, with the commissioners and with area sheriffs. Um, so I'm going to leave that there since I've already addressed that. Second thing is school safety. I am very proud to have been the first school resource officer in the county and I currently uh, am in charge of the only school resource officer program in the county. Uh, our school resource officer is here tonight and he does a fantastic job. I'm very proud of him and everything we have going on at GFW schools. I would like to see the, the, the school resource officer expanded throughout the county. If if it's feasible financially. Um, at the very least, whoever the county sheriff is should be on a first name basis with every administrator in the, in the county. That's, that I feel is, is absolutely necessary. With uh, everything that's been going on nationwide, it seems like we have one critical incident a month, it seems, um, around the nation. So at the very, very least, every rig, every fire, de fire department's ambulance and, uh, and squad car should have a mitigation plan. We should be familiar with those schools. I've even been out to the Hooterites talking to them about their school plan. And they're very happy to work with us. Um, and if we want to expand that into an SRO program or an officer friendly program, all the better. But it needs to start with the basic mitigation planning. I feel that hasn't been done. And it is a hot button topic nationwide. Um, third. I would change, like I, I touched a little bit on the schedule. I feel the schedule can be tweaked, uh, not only for customer service, but for officer safety. As well as I would meet with each and every employee um, and chief and ask what their ideas are. Because I'm not, I'd like to think I have a couple good ideas, but our talent is within our staff. And to bring those ideas up, to foster those ideas going forward is, is what I value. It's our community and our staff. Any more questions? Yep. Okay. That's this one goes to Karen. Okay. How do you see the role of county sheriff as it relates to ICE, or is ICE a non-issue here? Okay. Um, interesting. Yeah, there has been a lot of talk about uh, sanctuary cities, um, and um, I have heard some some comments that certain members of the population are afraid to call the police because of, of threat of deportation. Um, and that makes me sad as a, as a, as a community <coughs> leader and a, a local police chief and someone who aspires to be sheriff. Every single person should expect, the, should expect excellent professional service and the respect that they are due when they deal with any law enforcement officer. And I have been on the road for 15 years. Uh, I've not, even though I am a, a police chief, it's, it's, a, it's a road job. So, and I, I must say, I've never ever encountered any officer from any agency grilling uh, anyone about the status of their immigration, either roadside or at the jail. We are there to, to handle an issue, um, whether it is roadside or in a, in a home a call for service, we are there to deal with that issue at hand. We're there to, to mitigate the problem and um, provide courteous and professional service. So um, that being said, if we are notified by another agency that someone is, is, is um, that that person that we're dealing with is wanted for some reason I would absolutely cooperate. Um, fostering relationships and collaborative, uh, collaborative relationships is basically the crux of my campaign. I feel that Sibley County can do better on that and I would aspire to do that as a sheriff so I would certainly be more than happy to work with a, any agency that needed our assistance. Um, but that being said, I'm, every, every citizen, you know, regardless of status, should, be, should expect um, professional and courteous service from the police. Law enforcement, excuse me. Okay. Next question, or uh, same question yep. to Pat. 
How do you see the role of county sheriff as it relates to ICE, or is ICE a non-issue here? ICE is, for those that don't know, is the Immigration Service. Um, we work with ICE on a, on a somewhat regular basis, but over the past number of years, um, courts have given different rulings. It used to be that we held a lot of inmates for ICE, um, but the courts have changed their ruling, and currently, an ICE request, we will not hold anybody on an ICE request. We will hold on a warrant, but if we hold only on a request, we are setting up Sibley County to be liable for basically falsely holding somebody. So, simple answer is we will hold on an ICE warrant, we will not hold on an ICE request. All right. So next question goes to Pat. Okay. How do you see the role of the county sheriff in protecting our constitutional rights? That is one of the main functions of the sheriff. You're sworn to a, we whoever wins is sworn to uphold the constitution. So as far as how to do it, um, it's it's hard to give exam for me to just give examples. But if elected sheriff, I will uphold the constitution of Minnesota and of the United States. Okay. How do you see the role of the county sheriff in protecting our constitutional rights? Again, this is a, a pretty short one because I think Pat said it. I, I mean, that is the essential role of the sheriff and law enforcement. We are uh, bound to uphold the Constitution and uh, Minnesota state statute and uh, the city code. And you know, we are bound by integrity and professionalism um, to our job. And that's what holds us to our job, and that's why the sheriff is, is elected by the people, because the trust of the people to to uphold those rights. Um, I guess I that's all I have to say about that. We should take a fifteen minute break. Yeah, two more questions. Oh, no, let's take a break before we end the questions. Give them a chance to shake hands with them. Do we have uh, we have two more two more questions here? Yeah. And then I have a couple more in here. Okay. So next question goes to Pat. Do you see any big changes in the sheriff's budget? That's me. Okay. Let me repeat that question. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Yes. He's right. It's me. First. Okay. Do you see any big changes in the sheriff's budget? I I looked at the sheriff's budget for the last four years, um, and no, I didn't see. I mean, I didn't see anything that jumped out at me. I would, you know, as the sheriff, I think any new sheriff is going to be very fiscally responsible, uh, um, and I am certainly no no exception there. I uh, I've always, you know, one of my downfalls is possibly I worry a bit too much. And in Winthrop, I you know, I it's a it's a small town, small budget. Our our finances are 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 finite. Our resources, excuse me, are finite. So getting the most bang for your buck is is very important. So I would, you know, it would be a priority. That obviously we have we have commissioners that we have to. You know that um, we have the pleasure of, of doing business with, and I would meet with the commissioners immediately about you know the budget forecast, what I would like to change within the sheriff's office, how much it'll be. But again, um, I would be very remiss to add anything, um, you know, especially in the first year that is over and above what I feel is is fiscally responsible for the public. We have to we have to answer to each and every taxpayer for what we're spending, and right now I feel from what I've seen. Pat might be able to flesh out the numbers a little more. I've looked at, I've studied four years. I feel the sheriff's office does a good job of staying within budget. Okay, okay here's the question again. Do you see any big changes in the sheriff's budget? No, I don't see any big changes um, coming in the sheriff's budget. Um, first of all, I am fiscally conservative, so I also want to protect the budget um, and I want to protect people's tax money it's my tax money as well. But most budgets are, the vast majority of the budget is salary and benefits. And it's probably 25 to 30% of the rest of the budget that is for everything else. So while it's important for us to keep up with technology and not let our equipment fall behind and get old, we also need to be very mindful of the budget. and mindful of people's tax dollars. That is, people's tax dollars. OK. 
Okay, next question goes to Pat. Okay. What is your view of gun laws? In particular, stand your ground and conceal and carry permits. Well, gun laws are protected by the Second Amendment to the Constitution. And as sheriff, we are sworn to uphold gun law, or we are sworn to uphold the Constitution, which includes gun laws. I am a gun owner myself. I own guns. Um, I believe in people's rights to own guns. And as far as the conceal and carry goes, uh, when that first came into existence, I will admit that I was nervous, that I thought that that might be a problem. I was afraid that there's going to be shootings all over the place, but that just flat out has not material materialized. I am not aware of one instance in Minnesota, and I could be wrong, that there has been a problem because somebody uh, was using their conceal and carry permit. Um, it is important that we do the thorough background checks that we do to keep guns out of the hands of people that should not have them. But I have no issues with people owning and having guns as long as they're done so lawfully. There's a question again. What is your view of gun laws? In particular, stand your ground and conceal and carry permits. Okay. When you're talking to two law enforcement officers, you're probably going to get relatively the same um, same response. I'm a big Second Amendment fan. I'm a gun owner, uh, and uh, I'm I support the Second Amendment rights. Um, but again, I, I I agree with what Pat said about it is important to make sure, and we're fleshing out uh, these these permits to make sure that they are being thoroughly done, uh, that guns aren't getting into the wrong hands. Um, but I agree, as a, as a law enforcement officer, it's never the folks with the conceal and carry permit that I worry about. Uh, I guess never say never, but it's the it's the people that don't have them that may you know pull an illegal firearm that I do worry about. I have not seen any, I, I personally have never seen any issues with any conceal and carry. So I, uh, I support the Second Amendment and uh, about it. Are there any more questions? We should take a break and all these candidates go out and say hi. Can we? We only have three more questions. Yeah, we just have three, three more questions. Oh, only you, Kevin. <laughs> You're the only one. Are you okay with all of them? Do you want? Okay. Can I read the middle one? I'm sorry, I didn't get over. I have three more. Okay, and this next question goes to Pat. Didn't I start? Okay, Is it agencies mine or rarely. No, 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 wait. No, Karen. Okay. Yeah, sure. Okay, sure. All right. Agencies rarely work alone now. Can you share with us an instance where you worked as a cooperative leader with other agencies? Um, absolutely, yeah. Uh, collaborative relationships are the way we get, get the job done in law enforcement. Um, so very, very important. And uh, I currently, uh, like I had touched on before, hold, lead the school resource officer program at GFW Schools. So I started out as a first school resource officer, and now I'm in charge of the program. And uh, that is a collaborative effort, um, one that's going on 15 years now. It started off as a grant-funded program, and now is fully funded between GFW schools and the, in, uh, and, uh, the towns, Gibbon, Winthrop, and Fairfax. And uh, it, is, it is a lot of collaboration, I guess I've, I've already said, but I will again. It's, it's three police chiefs. Uh, we have, of course, our school resource officer, Kenny Pe Peterson, three police chiefs, three uh, superintendent, three principals. Uh, there's a lot of administration involved, and uh, there's a, 
there's a lot of different personalities, a lot of different ideas, and we have been very successful at coming to the table with schedules, with, uh, you know, because we always have our school resource officer. It's, it, it, law enforcement is reactive. Yes, the program is, is, is supposed to be proactive, whereas most of his downtime is with the younger students, but we all know law enforcement is reactive. He's going to run to where the fires are, so to speak. And uh, so managing his time between the three 